Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to Morning Cup of Jesus. I'm your host, Minister Edward Broom. It's a blessed day indeed. Like every day that the Lord has made. Without any more delay, let's get into it, shall we? Father God in heaven, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for another day. Thank you, God, for putting me to sleep another night and waking me up another morning, God. Thank you for giving me another night of rest, Lord God. Even though I might have went to sleep a little later than usual, Lord God, you still woke me up a little earlier, Lord God, and I thank you. Thank you for giving me time to uh, to realize something that I was neglecting, Lord God, uh, and allow me time to correct it in the name of Jesus. Forgive me, God, and help me, but I, I thank you. I'm grateful, God, for revelation, Lord God, because sometimes we get so um, caught up in doing things, Lord God, that we don't uh, we don't take time to to sit down and ask you about what we're doing. And God, uh, I thank you, God, you just revealed that to me. And it all goes together with with the scripture today, God. But I'm I'm grateful for everything you've done, everything you're doing, and everything that you're going to do, Lord God. Have your way. Have your let your will be done, not my will, but your will, Lord God. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. In Jesus' name, Amen, Amen. <clears throat> All right, today's scripture is coming. Today's scripture is coming from um, Jeremiah twenty nine, verses eight through fourteen. For thus says the Lord of hosts, <clears throat> the God of Israel, <clears throat> do not let your prophets and your diviners who are in your midst deceive you, nor listen to your dreams which you cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. For thus says the Lord, after 70 years I completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. 
I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you to the place from which I caused you to be carried away captive. <clears throat> May the Lord bless the readers, the hearers, and especially the doers of his holy word. <clears throat> we pick up right here in verse uh, 8 of chapter of Jeremiah 29. Um, what has happened is uh, something, uh, they, they about to go, they, they, uh, <laughs> They're getting some news from God. People start at verse 11. People say, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They don't bag up and read 10. They definitely don't go all the way back to the beginning of Jeremiah 29 or a few chapters over and see what's really going on. God is telling them, hey, this is going to happen. The people who are telling you it's not going to happen, I think um, I think um, Jeremiah gave the people the word, say it's going to be 70 years. God told them 70 years by the mouth of the prophet Jeremiah. And um and um and then somebody came along and said, nah, it's gonna be two years or something. And God said, I ain't sending them to tell you that. I ain't changed my my prophecy and my promise. I promise after 70 years, I'll got something good for you. I didn't say after two years. And so that's what we pick it up at right here. And and in um in, in, in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 8, when we read all that. But I want to say this. This is what I'm focusing on today. People give the devil too much power, too much credit, and blame too much bad stuff on him. <clears throat> we we always, oh, the devil is the devil doing this and that, this and that. But we see in the book of Job, read Job, I said read chapter 1, because chapter 1, <clears throat> Where you can see God uh, allowing him to, you know, what I'm saying power, allowing him, uh, allowing him the, the authority, whatever he it is he's exercising. But God is allowing him, and we see that uh, God allows Satan to do bad things to Job in in Job chapter one. We see in the book of Exodus, read in Exodus. I got chapter nine, verse twelve down here. But it's mentioned more than once. I think that Pharaoh hardened his own heart at least once or twice. But God hardened Pharaoh's heart as well. And, and, and Pharaoh kept the children of Israel in slavery. But God, it said, God, Exodus 9, 12, God hardened Pharaoh's heart. You know what I'm saying? Um, we see that God gave Saul a distressing spirit, which caused Saul to act violently towards David. That's in 1 Samuel. Uh, chapter 18, and it's verse 10 through 11. When I while I looked and I saw that Saul had a distressing spirit in chapter 16, but I saw that he threw the spirit, David, in chapter 18. I said, oh, man, he I, I said he threw the spear in 18, but he, had, he, he threw the spear in 18, but he had the distressing spirit from the Lord in 16. Then I looked closely in 18, and it was all, it was all in one passage, I, right in front of me. Verses 10 and 11, 1 Samuel chapter 18. Said God gave solid, and he said, and the distressing spirit from God came upon Saul, and Saul tried to do the spear and tried to pin David to the wall. But these things came from God. God allowed these things, caused these things, made these things happen, whichever way you want to put it. But why does God do such things? Now, that's the big question. That's the million dollar question. And I can give you a definite answer. I can tell you what the Bible shows us. Instead of blaming things on Satan, we should constantly go to God in prayer, seeking answers. God said that when we seek him with our whole heart, we will find him. He says it right here in Jeremiah. And he says, in I read in the book of Proverbs, probably some, and he probably said it to the children. And um and when he gave out the law back then uh and uh maybe in Exodus a number do the round him he when you seek God with all your heart with your whole heart he even says in Deuteronomy chapter five uh trust in the Lord with all your heart yeah you know, he, he uh you should he nice to love the Lord with all your heart all your heart Proverbs chapter three says trust in the Lord with all your heart uh Jesus says in Matthew twenty two Love the Lord with all your heart. See, all your heart, not some of it. 
not part of it, not the majority of it, but you got to place your heart in God. You got to place your love in God and not have it split between two things. Now, you can't say half of my heart belongs to God and half of it belongs to the, the people, the family. Your whole heart has to belong to God. And guess what? When your whole heart belongs to God, he gives you the love to reciprocate toward people. Your first love is going to be a parallel love, going up to God, God coming down to you. Your second love is going to be a horizontal love, going going east and west and going all around you and whatnot. So, so that's, and that's what the Bible shows us. When we seek God with our whole heart, that's when we find him. Many times, God is trying to get our attention when we get so distracted in this busy world. You might be doing something and God allows something to happen because he wants you to stop and say, then seek him. Man, and we, we give Satan. I say we, but I'm really saying you. You see what I'm saying? Because I found out that Satan, the devil, belongs to God too. <laughs> See, you belong to God, I belong to God, and the devil belongs to God too. The lake of fire belongs to God. He created the heavens belong to God. Everything belongs to God. You know, and nothing is out of his uh, dominion or his territory. All of the whole universe... All of existence belongs to God. And so Satan can't operate with, Satan cannot operate outline outside the, the boundaries of his guidelines. Whatever God, whatever guidelines and whatever allowances God has permitted Satan, he can only operate within those boundaries. Now, you ask him, you, ask, you can't ask me why God do it, but I got a few reasons why, based on scripture. But it can be any number of reasons. Many times he's trying to get our attention. If we distract him, I want you to stop and, and listen. You know, oftentimes you, you ain't you ain't talking to him. You forgot about him or you're not spending time with him. You can even be doing work for the ministry. You can be doing work for the kingdom of God and you're not stopping to spend time with God in prayer. Working for God and spending time with God is not the same thing. And I have to keep saying that I ain't got to convince myself I need to practice what I preach. I oftentimes, I'm work, and I, people think, oh, he spent a lot of time with the Lord because I always maybe boast and brag about I'm with the Lord in the morning, with the Lord in noontime, you know, and then with the Lord at night. But just like this morning, I only pray for a few minutes. I only read for a few minutes. And then the rest of my time, maybe about an close to an hour, 45 minutes or up to an hour is get preparing the scripture and the commentary and, and sending it out and, uh, and, 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 uh, broadcasting the uh, live and then posting it to YouTube. Cause it's not live on YouTube. It's on there. After I post it on Facebook. I go to YouTube and upload the video. So a lot of my time is working. I spend some time with the Lord early and then I work for the next 30, 45 or an hour. And then I'd be done by 7.30. And I, well, yeah, because it'd be on YouTube by 7.30. But I start at 5.30. See? I start at 5.30. And by 6, I pray a little before I get up. Before I get out of bed, I pray a little sitting in the bed. Then I get myself together. Then I'm, I'm in here praying again by 6. Until about 6.10 or 6.15. I don't spend no more than about another 15 minute praying. And then I'm getting it together. And getting it to everybody for the next hour. So it is an hour. That's a whole hour that I'm getting it together. If I do it from 6.15 to 7.15. And, and I do stop at 7.15 sometimes. But yeah, I'm working for the Lord. And you can get distracted and not even spending time with the Lord. And not hearing what the Lord is saying. Because you're doing so much. You're like, I'm doing it for the Lord. So it's good, right? I'm not saying it's good or bad. Just telling you what we think. What we say. But sometimes God might allow something to happen. To get your attention when you distracted. You can be distracted with sinful things. You can be distracted with, with things that are, are, are neither sinful nor for the kingdom. The neutral thing, I'm going to say that. You can be distracted with sinful things. You can be distracted with kingdom things. Or you can be distracted with neutral things. There are some things that are neutral. There are some things that are neutral. We can't, we can't accredit everything to his work for the kingdom. We can, and we can't accredit every, everything to 
is is work for the devil. But there are works for both sides. You know what I'm saying? Some things are in the middle of it. I, I, in my wisdom, humanly wisdom, can say, well, I need to get me some time sitting here in front of this TV for the next two hours or three hours so that my mind will be ready later on when it's time to uh, read the Bible and get something together for the people. See, I try to justify my neutral time or my idle time or even if it's sin, idolatry time, I try to justify it by saying I need that in the meantime so I can uh, focus better on God's time. So, so I'm saying, you know, we can we can categorize stuff how we, want, how we want to, but we need to stop and spend some time with the Lord all the time. So it might be a distraction that, that's causing us to not hear God, so we send something to catch our attention. Um, um, many times, he is chastising us as he does to all of his children whom he loves. I think Proverbs 3.10 or 3.11 says, whom the Lord loves, he chastises, just like a father chastises his son. Whipping your, whipping your children does not mean you hate them. Abusing your children means you hate them. But whooping your children and chastising your children, punishing your children, it does not mean that you hate them. That means you're trying to correct them. You're trying to and, and, and you're trying to enforce some type of discipline on them so that they will know right from wrong. That's what chastising is. And sometimes some when God when God allows things, it's to chastise us. Distractions might be the issue. Chastising might be the issue. Um many times, and we all have done wrong. So None of us can say, I ain't done anything wrong. Now, me, this is how I am, because I know God, and I fear God, and I love God, and I honor God, and I reverence God, and I'm grateful for, to God, for God. And so I'd be, if anything happens, if I feel a little pain and see any little thing coming, I'm, Lord, hey, tell me what's wrong, what's going on, God? What am I doing wrong? What have I done wrong? What do I need to change, God? That's just my relationship with God. I don't fault anybody for them not having a relationship like mine or better than mine. They're, I'm not at the top of the food chain. Believe it or not, there's a lot of people say a lot of good things about me, but I'm not at the peak of the mountain when it comes to a zeal with, for God, a relationship with God, like, as I say all the time. There are some people who spend 24-7 spending time with the Lord and working for the Lord. I spend hours a day doing idle stuff sometimes. So uh, you know, I so I'm not perfect at all, but I do know that uh that <clears throat> that sometimes <clears throat> that's that's what happens. I mean, you know, it, the, he might it might be a distraction, and God is getting our attention. He might be chastising us, and we have all done wrong, you know. And, and so it just could be a number of things. Many times he um he might be strengthening us. God might be using something to strengthen us. Uh, or teaching us a lesson. Not teaching you a lesson like pop, pop, I'm going to teach you a lesson because you're bad. But I'm saying, teaching you something. You have to, you, uh, this is a common phrase. We learn from our mistakes. That's a common phrase. I'm not saying God telling you, get in there and learn from your mistake. He might be teaching you something. Something going on, you going down the wrong road, or you did something wrong. Uh, but, but I mean, like, then that's what I was saying. I'm like, God, what, what do I need to do? What do I need to change? You know what I'm saying? So, that sometimes it might be chastising us because we've done something wrong. And I, I fall out and say, what have I done wrong, God? Or what am I doing? What do I need? And sometimes it might it, it might just be correction or, 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 or um, teaching, showing you something, teaching you something, um, something, helping you to do something a different way. I'm going to say it like that. Make, causing you to do something a different way than what you're doing. You might not even be doing something wrong, but you might be doing it uh, in a way that's not God's way. And technically, you can say it's wrong if it ain't God's way. Or God might have gave you three options, and all three of them is good, but you're like, well, you need to choose this one right here. you know. Or, or he might not have gave you the option. Or, you know, it might not it might not be anything bad, but it just might be you picked the wrong thing, and God just teach, learn, leading you in the right direction. Or he can be making you strong. Now, that's the one that... Uh, we oftentimes say, right, I'm going to deal with it because it's making me strong. But it's not always strength. Sometimes it's a distraction that's causing God to get at you. Sometimes it's chastising and rebuke that's causing God to get at you. And sometimes it's so he can strengthen you. 
So we can't blame everything on God is just strengthening me. Uh, many times we need to go fall down at the throne of grace and say, God, what am I doing wrong? What have I done? Because you've always done something wrong. Nobody lived their life without doing something wrong. We've always done wrong. And so those three reasons, because you're distracted, or it might be chastising you, or because he's strengthening you in the area, or, or, or he's teaching you something. I got those together. Many times he is using us to, to show something to someone else. As he was uh, allowing Satan to do that stuff to Job, um, he, 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 he was bragging on Job. He knew, God knew that Job was not going to uh, fold. See, he knew that. He knew that, and he proved it to Satan, and he proved it to all of us. See, it ain't it wasn't just for Satan. That was so God can show all of us, hey, I put this man through hell, living hell, and this man still did not turn his back on me. He still held on, even when his wife joined him in his sorrow and, and then tried to turn it into anger. And turn him to say something bad. Now his wife believed. She was a believer. She was a believer because she said curse God and die. She didn't say your God and, or or the day. She said God. She knew who God was. She knew who God was. And some people get mad at God. She was just saying, go and get mad at God so he can go and take you out. She knew that God was going to take Job out if he got mad at God and willing and and rebelled against God. She believed that he would do it. She knew. I believe I know too. If I tell somebody, well, go on and get mad at God and cuss him out so he can kill you, that don't make me no unbelievable. It just make me rebellious. She could have been rebellious, but she was still a believer though. Or she was trying to get him to rebel, I guess. I don't know if she was going to rebel with him or whatever. But rebelling against God don't, don't mean that you don't believe God. You just, some people rebel against God and they know that God's real. They're just not going to adhere to him, submit to him, surrender to him. They curse him to his face, dare him to do something. They don't have to deal with that at the last day. But they take it to their grave. And so and so sometimes God is using our, our, our tribulation or our, 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 our hardship to show somebody something like he shows Satan. And like he shows all, it shows all of us in the book of Job. And he says also, the word of God says also that he raised up Pharaoh so that he could show his power in the world against Pharaoh. So you don't know say he raised up Pharaoh. He allowed Pharaoh to keep them in slavery and do all and allow Pharaoh to be in power and all this all this stuff so that he could show his power is mightier than Pharaoh. And she could show how he's you know, he's gonna bring his people out and this and that. And that's what God did. And 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 there are other reasons. There are other reasons why thing why bad things happen to us what, is, is, uh, con considering what we call bad things. There's a lot of other reasons. And, and, and God, see God, whatever the case may be, God should be the center of our attention. We, we need to take our grievance to the Lord. We can't say, well, this old cancer got me or this old pain got me or this old finances, the this credit got me or that old stuff got me. The, go to God and see what he says because God's got you in his hand. None of this other stuff has got you. None of that other stuff has control over you, has power over you. God, your creator, has you in his hand. And your your life, your fate, your future is in his hand. He says in 29.11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you hope. And then in King James say an expected end. People say hope and an expected end. Hope and a future. God plans to give you a future. Not for you to be dead in the past. His, his plan is for a future. Some people don't accept the future. Some people don't, 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 don't want to bow in and give in to the future. Some people don't want to listen to what he has for them. And so that's their loss. But God has something for you. Let's take our grievances to him, whatever it whatever might be. It is God who made us, and we belong to him. He knows what's best for us. So listen, God knows what's best for you. So search for him until you 
until you search for him and inquire of him. Search for God with your whole heart and inquire of him until you have an answer. Until he until you he till, till he give you an answer to and say, well, this is what I'm going to do later on, or until you get a solution, which seem like the same thing, but they cannot they they're not the same thing. I'm gonna say solution first. A solution is problem solved. Problem solved. Search for God and inquire of Him until your problem is solved, or until God give you an answer and say, I'm not gonna solve your problem, or until He just gives you the peace that surpasses all understanding. A solution to your problem, an answer saying he's not going to solve your problem or he's going to do something differently or just a peace that God has it under control. And he's going to work all things together for the good of those who love him and those who are called according to his purpose. Because truly indeed, God loves us all and he wants the best for all of us and he knows what's best for all of us. So we should just place our trust in him, place our whole heart in him and let him work it all out. While you trying to figure it out, God has already worked it out. Believe that. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you've already worked it out, Lord. When we trying to, when we stress and trying to figure it out, God, it's already been worked out before it was even a problem. And to you, Lord God, it's not even a problem. It's not a problem with you. It's just your order of things. God, help us to recognize that your order of things is the best order that there is. And anything done outside of your order is out of order, Lord God. Help us to realize that and to acknowledge that and to honor that, Lord God, and to honor whatever decisions you make about our lives, about our families, finances, friends, health, wealth, education, anything, God, anything, anything that you decide, God, help us to acknowledge and to honor your decision. And to trust in you, God, to do the right thing, to do the best thing for your children. But God, keep it in our heads and in our hearts that the best thing for all the best thing for all your people is saving our soul. And anything that you add to that, Lord God, it's a bonus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. All right. All right, that's it for Morning Cup of Jesus. <clears throat> if the Lord is willing, we're going to be right back here tomorrow morning around the same time. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God bless you. Enjoy your day. Thank you.